On one hand, you have collagen protein. It's a mix of aminos, and they call it a protein. It's not really a protein, in a sense. And then you have maybe a protein powder or some meat. Well, if you look on the surface, they're both proteins. And the argument that floats around the internet is that collagen does not work because all it is is aminos. And if you're getting enough amino acids from your protein, you would never need to consume collagen. And I understand that theory because when you consume protein, if I were to consume a protein shake or a hamburger, my body would take all the amino acids that's in that protein and it would put it into what's called the amino acid pool. And once it's in the amino acid pool, my body pulls whatever aminos it needs to build hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of different things based upon those aminos. Sometimes those aminos are strung together in peptide chains to make things like insulin, to make other peptide hormones and things like that, including collagen. The problem is that it's not a blanket statement. Different amounts of different aminos will trigger different things and give you more bioavailability. So collagen is not just a mix of aminos. I mean, yes, it is proline, glycine, and hydroxyproline, but ultimately when they come together to create a collagen, they become a bioactive peptide or have bioactive peptides, which have an entirely different effect within the body. So before I explain how this works, let me give you some food for thought. For however long we can look back, we can see that humans ate all cuts of meat. They would eat different connective tissues. They would eat the gristle. They would eat the fascia. They would eat the cartilage. These things were consumed. We live in a stage now where we eat choice cuts, right? We do not get the collagen. So before you rain on a collagen supplement, and full disclaimer, this video is not sponsored at all by a supplement company or a collagen at all. But before you rain on collagen supplementation, ask yourself if you're actually getting it from your diet. Anyhow, if you look at some papers, you can get some solid justification, and then we'll understand the science after we look at the data. There was a study published in the International Journal of Dermatology, and this was looking specifically at skin, okay? And it was a huge meta-analysis, looking at 19 different studies with over 1,100 participants. They found, plain and simple, collagen supplementation had a dramatic improvement on wrinkles and skin health. Okay, so we do know there's something there. Would you have gotten the same result if you just consumed a bunch of whey protein? No, in fact, there's been literature to look at that as well. Collagen does act differently. But let's look at another study published in Nutrients that looks specifically at bone mineral density, because this is a hard one to really gauge. So what they did is they took 131 participants, they gave them just five grams of collagen or a placebo for 12 months. Okay, what they found was very fascinating. The collagen group, of course, had more mo bone mineral density, excuse me the placebo group did not. But more importantly, there were very specific markers that they saw. They saw an increase in a bone marker called P1NP. This is a marker that is seen when bone is forming. It is a bone formation marker. So when the body starts building, building bone, we see this P1NP appear, okay? But that wasn't the only marker that researchers saw. There was also a marker called CTX. CTX is a marker associated with bone degradation. You see it in osteoporosis. Well, the group that did not have the collagen, they saw a lot of markers of this CTX. So simply by taking collagen peptides, specific peptides, not just aminos once again, they saw an increase in bone formation and markers and the group that did not saw degradation. Well, okay, let's move into talking about arthritis and kind of joint stiffness a little bit. There's a study published in International Orthopedics that looked at a meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials. So at a compilation of various randomized controlled trials, about as good as you can get. They saw that collagen supplementation was associated with a significantly reduced score on what is called the WOMAC score. That is the gold standard for the last couple of decades when it comes down to like arthritis related stiffness, pain, things like that. And they saw a specific improvement in the subscore when it came down to stiffness, independent of pain. So even though people might still be in pain, because that could be a completely different situation, the collagen improved their stiffness. That is tremendous. One more major study before we get into why so many people on the internet are flat out wrong right now. And that's when we talk about heart health. The Journal of Atherosclerosis and Thrombosis published a paper where they had subjects consume 16 grams of collagen peptides split over two doses throughout the day. 
or they gave them a placebo for a period of time. Well, what they found is that the collagen group had a significant reduction in what are called toxic advanced glycation in product formation. Okay, and they also had a decrease in what is called the CAVI score, which was a rating of sort of their arterial stiffness. So they had less stiffness. Now it makes sense. Collagen is like connective tissue. So I'm sure it makes, it plays a part in how our stiffness of our arteries, right? So very, very solid data there. What's interesting is that this all had to do with specific peptides. They didn't just give people proline, glycine, and hydroxyproline. They gave them specific collagen peptides like you would see in a supplement or like you might get if you were to just eat a burger with the gristle in it. There is a big piece a lot of us are missing. So when people say it's a scam because collagen is just a protein, they're flat out wrong. They're flat out incorrect. Because sure, you can fill that amino acid pool. But let's explain something a little bit more. To form collagen, you need a lot of other things. You need zinc, you need magnesium, you need vitamin D, you actually need vitamin C as well. And then you need specific abundances of amino acids and certain surpluses to actually signal this. And then the peptide form, like if you were to eat straight up tendon and stuff like that, or even specific supplements, you're going to signal as a signaling molecule the potential formation of collagen, which we'll get into with a few studies that really back this up. Now you think I'm just going to sell a collagen supplement. What I'm gonna recommend, eat some meat. But better yet, eat ground beef. Eat ground beef, eat burgers. It's the best form of complete protein, but guess what? It also has the collagen in it. It has the gristle. It has what you need. You wouldn't have to take a collagen supplement if you were to eat that a few times a week, realistically. But you could always supplement with more for your skin and whatnot. I also put a link down below if you wanna try what I would consider to be the best burgers. It's ButcherBox. And yes, they are a sponsor on this video. And yes, I am asking you to try them out, but that's how we make content on this channel. And it's the burgers and the red meat and the steaks that I use, but they also have chicken, they have scallops, they have all kinds of different meat products and then they're shipped directly to your doorstep, but their beef is grass-fed, grass-finished. So I'd recommend their ground beef or their ground bison. And that link down below will get you a special link, special access to try it out. And you can also try the different cuts that I try. You can try all the different things. They also have all kinds of different promotional stuff going on. Sometimes they have free ground beef for life. Sometimes they have free bacon for life. All kinds of different promos going on only through that special link in the top line of the description. So if you want to support this channel and you want to get some really good tasting grass-fed, grass-finished beef that realistically is probably cheaper than the grocery store, use that link down below underneath this video. Let's look at postprandial absorption here for a second. That means how quickly it absorbs after eating. There was a study that was published in Nutrients that gave subjects 35 grams of hydrolyzed collagen versus non-enzymatically hydrolyzed collagen. And what they found is that hydrolyzed collagen, collagen excuse me, absorbed significantly better. So they actually ended up having an increase in serum levels of the amino acids, proline, glycine, and hydroxyproline, meaning that when you do take it in supplement form, you do get a significant surge in those aminos. So there is a benefit to taking it in supplement form above food. Now, I'm all about getting the food. Like, believe it or not, that's the pretty much the only way I would recommend getting collagen unless you feel like you need more. Then supplements make sense. If you're trying to have an added effect for better skin, maybe, maybe your joints are hurting and you feel like you need extra, but if you're already healthy and feeling good, it might not be required for general maintenance. But here's the thing I've been talking about and kind of teasing with that maybe you've been hearing but haven't been understanding what I'm really saying. Bioactive peptide. What the flippin' heck does that even mean? Well, a peptide is not just an amino acid. A peptide is a, is a, for, a significant like change. Like it's actually aminos formed in specific ways, right? Sometimes you could have 200 aminos that are linked together in a certain way to make a peptide bond. Well, that same study published in Nutrients that was looking at bone mineral density, what they found in that study was that the bioactive peptides that were in the collagen they consumed ended up acting as signaling molecules. So they ended up triggering the body to form more collagen independent of just the collagen that was consumed. So basically they acted as a signal to say, hey, we got a bunch of collagen, let's go put it in the right place. It's not just the aminos, there's actually a signaling effect as well. Then there was a study published in Medical Research and Opinion where they found that when collagen was consumed and it was absorbed through the small intestine, after absorbing through the small intestine, it went to the cartilage. It didn't just go to a magical pool right? It absorbed through the small intestine and then was found directly thereafter in the cartilage, showing that when we consume it, 
it's going where it's supposed to go. And aminos don't have brains. They don't just magically know where to go. It's the fact that these bioactive peptides are signaling the body to say, hey, this abundance of specific aminos needs to go to a specific place where needed. We do not give our body enough credit. If we were to just consume a protein shake, we would not be getting that same signaling effect. But there's more. There was a study published in Molecules that found that when collagen was consumed, there was an increase in gene expression of collagen type 1 alpha 1. This is the gene that is responsible for collagen type 1 formation. The most prevalent collagen gene that's out there, forming the most prevalent collagen type that is in our body. So by consuming collagen, we increased the expression at a genetic level that signaled for us to form collagen. Consuming collagen tells the body to form a blueprint, to build from a blueprint, and repair. This is why the rodent model research has been so promising, even though it's been harder to demonstrate in humans over the last five years. Like we've seen stuff in rodents where it's improving like tendon tensile strength and improving connective tissue left and right. And in humans, there's some like kind of, I don't know, dodgy data out there with like Achilles tendons being stronger and things like that. But the bottom line is we have what we need to know to know that peptides are working for us. At the end of the day, remember this. You can consume protein until you are blue in the face, but you do need to signal for the body to repair what needs to be repaired. And collagen is not a scam. It makes sense. And if you think it's a scam, that's fine. Just eat some burgers and get your collagen in a natural way. Because ask yourself this, where are you getting your collagen? Are you even getting collagen? I'll see you tomorrow.